ladies and gentlemen, we have White House advisors in USA Today and other places saying anyone that is a Republican is a member of the Jim Jones cult. And I would agree if you're a mainline Republican, uh, you might as well go join a, a cult in Guyana and drink uh, cyanide. But compared to the mainline Democrats who call Obama their savior, and Barbara Walters saying they thought he would be the Messiah, that's a quote from Piers Morgan. We played it uh, last hour when she was uh, on Piers Morgan. I mean, we're talking about real cult-like here. And by the way, PolitiFact, uh, we're going to put it back on screen, does report, does report, the Democrats have denied it, uh, that it says in the code, hidden in the code, there is a sentence that says you waive any reasonable right to privacy or your personal information for the transisting of it or storage of it. And it goes on to break it all down that that indeed has happened. And that's in the new hospital admission forms that you waive your rights. They're just going to share it. And, and that they're debiting people's accounts with it. And that telemarketers are calling people. And that they're death panels. And that it's doubling and tripling prices. And then the architect of it, Ezekiel Emanuel, admits that it's meant to get rid of the free market healthcare system. This is all on record. And then if you're informed, you're a cult member. Let me tell you what a cult member is, is the East German Stasi putting up with that tyranny and carrying it out. And now Merkel says the NSA is like the Stasi. No, they're far worse. And then we've got World Net Daily, Democrat, investigate every homeschool parent. A Democrat state senator in Ohio has proposed a law that would require every homeschooling parent to be investigated and approved by social services. See? Before they would be allowed to teach their own children. And in Germany, they arrest people that homeschool. Even if they have teaching degrees, you're not allowed to. And if they flee to the U.S., Obama sends them back and doesn't give them political asylum, political prisoner, escapee. And, of course, Nazi Germany started the practice in Europe, the, the, the Russians had done it before, of taking children and putting them into the state collectives. So uh, the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, I want to get them on, calls the bill sponsored by Senator Capri Caffaro, the worst ever homeschool law proposed, SB 248. Remember, MSNBC says in promos, your children now belong to the collective. Now, Lou Rockwell, the chairman of the Von Mies Institute, uh, the School of Austrian Economics, and of course, former chief of staff for Ron Paul, joins us, and he also uh, co-hosts and does shows over at the Ron Paul channel that I was honored to be on Monday. We appreciate him coming up on the holidays, joining us. Very busy man. He'll be with us for about the next 45 minutes, and we'll go back to your calls and then to our next guest, who's a victim of warrantless DNA checkpoints in uh, Pennsylvania. It's happening all over the country, though. Uh, Pennsylvanians coerced into giving uh, swabs under federal program. So this is all the bum rush tyranny. Before I get into Obamacare, uh, the wars, uh, menacing Russia, where he thinks things are going, I want to ask Lou Rockwell of LouRockwell.com. As a really smart guy who has, and I'm not kissing his side, and it's true, great gravitas in understanding socioeconomic and political movements. We see a massive awakening, but we see a bum rush by tyranny to, to engage in extreme exercises of abuse to set the precedent, break our will. A known criminal precept throughout history. So A, what does he say about this almost orgy of corruption going on? And then how do we counter it and where does he see it going? And how do we avert these different kleptocratic communist Chinese, the, the Russians, the, the insane people that run the West, which I would say are the most evil of the three predatory power groups? What do we as individuals worldwide in solidarity with free individuals? I love Russians. I love Chinese. I love everybody. I know you do as well. How do we get this love train going to try to counter our psycho governments before they start World War III, Lou Rockwell? Well, you know, one of the things that, Alex, that's been so encouraging has been the reaction of people in this country and all around the world about the about Edward Snowden, one of the great men of American history, of course. Uh, what his leaks have taught us about what the government would like to do to us, is doing to us, and is doing to everybody on Earth. As Glenn Greenwald pointed out uh, in testimony to the EU Parliament, you know, it's the goal of the NSA to abolish individual privacy for every person on Earth. So that's, you know, they're, of course, not only are they totalitarian, they're insane, as, of course, uh, it, if we think of what, you know, Acton said about, uh, uh, about power, there's maybe a third step, you know, you, you become insane because uh, men and women are not supposed to be exercising this sort of control over other people. 
So the people who do it, who, who lust after power, uh, there's a diabolical aspect to them, but they also go crazy. So this is, these are the people we're up against. Now, I think they can be beaten, and I think the key is exactly what you mentioned about a solidarity among the peoples of the world against our governments. So we have a totalitarian government in the U.S. This is no longer a free country. We still have pockets of freedom. Um, but John T. Flynn, the great old right uh, journalist, defined totalitarianism as when a government felt it could do whatever it wanted. It wasn't necessarily doing everything it wanted to do, but it, there was no, no restraints on it. So certainly that's the view of the U.S. government, whether we look at Obamacare and by the way, bad in government interventions, all government interventions into medical care, didn't start with Obama, didn't start with the Democrats. It started with Eisenhower. Truman actually tried it first. Nixon was terrible. Reagan was terrible. Kennedy was terrible. Johnson was terrible. All these guys are, uh, you know, you can count, you can be sure of one thing. If any guy gets to be president of the U.S., he's a bad guy. It's, uh, that's, just, that's just part of his resume. So these people have totalitarian ambitions. Uh, for money and power. They want money, they want uh, sex, they want all the other things that come with being a top politician. But the key thing they want is power, because if you have power, uh, then you can bring about all these other things. So w we have this carbuncle in DC and all its corporate allies arrayed against the American people, similar things in other countries. But I think Americans are, are waking up. And I must say, when I first, when Ed, Ed Snowden first uh, uh, did his heroic act, I thought, Boy, you know, it's wonderful to, for us to know this. It's good for us to know what's happening to us. But I think Americans are such sheeple, they're not going to care. Well, that I, I turned out to be wrong, thank goodness. So uh, it's only a minority, of course. But everything for good or ill is done by, uh, by minorities. So there is a minority for liberty, especially among young people. And I credit Ron Paul uh, with being the key guy in this. But, of course, there are many great uh, people preceding Ron Paul, building up the edifice of the ideas of liberty. Young people aren't buying this stuff. They aren't buying the wars. They aren't buying the police state. Uh, they fear the police. They worry about the police. No, really, outside of people who work for government, if you see a, a policeman, do you think, oh, thank goodness I'm going to be safe? You know, no, nobody, nobody has that reaction. We know they're arrayed against us. So many of them, of course, uh, Iraq and Afghani veterans with PTSD and they see us as a bunch of potential terrorists. So, uh, but young people are not putting up, but there's been a real sea change. Polls show it, I know, in the young people you interact with, the young people that I talk to, all the people I talk to who, who are dealing with, with the young people, they find a huge difference, just a huge difference. And uh, I, think that's, I think that's our salvation. I think the next generation and the generation after that are not putting up with this. They're not going to put up with what those of us in the, uh, you know, sort of baby boom generations and so forth have put up with. So they're, uh, I'm very encouraged about the future, as bad as things are right now. And, of course, the government, they want every dime we've got. They want to know every thought in your head. They want to know everywhere you go. Um, they want to, you know, it's... Uh, Somebody recently referred to it, you know, it turned out that Orwell's 1984 was an instruction manual <laughs> exactly. rather than a novel. But it's actually, this is even a worse situation than 1984. And the boobs are still saying, hey, we're number one, we're the freest, we're the most prosperous, we're the best. You know, it's not, it's, of course, it's not true. But the view that the U.S. is the best, and it's the U.S. government they always are talking about when they say the U.S., they're not talking about companies and wonderful families and and uh, uh, wonderful charity. Oh, they never so say the individual is am is amazing in the American experience and was the best worldwide. No one doubted that globally. Now we're the best tyranny and the most unhealthy and the most dumbed down because right. we have the biggest state the world has ever seen with a bunch of delusional control freaks who literally think they're about to carve this country up. And the biggest empire the world has ever seen. It's not only the biggest state here at home, it's... It's the global state, which, of course, has even uh, uh, ambitions to control the solar system. <laughs> so they, uh, they're, there's, there's nothing that's beyond them. And it's always important to remember when we're dealing with the state, nothing is beyond them. Any evil, any, any, any uh, horrible thing that they might contemplate doing, if they, don't, if they don't do some great evil, it's only because they haven't thought of it or they felt it was not in their interest or they felt they couldn't carry it out. But it's never the reaction, uh-oh, 
We can't do that. It's wrong. That's never, never their reaction. So this is a very bad bunch of people. They're thieves. They're murderers. They're guilty of all kinds of crimes. And maybe the great libertarian insight is just because you're in a government suit, just because you work for the government, just because you have a bunch of little medals on your chest or a badge on your pocket or whatever, doesn't mean that you're above the moral law. We are all subject to the same moral law. So the things, Alex, that are illegal for you and me, uh, and rightly illegal, murder, theft, kidnapping, and so forth, don't become public policy when creeps from the government do them. They're sure. criminals. They're criminals. Well, Lou Rockwell, I think what's really backfiring on them, and I want to come back from Brad and get your take on this and cover some of the issues, is that they're trying to treat us all like we're criminals and give us uh, not just all this race baiting guilt, but also guilt like we could all be terrorists. And everyone really instinctively knows, hey, I'm not a perp. Statistically, government's more of a perp. Quit treating me like I'm scum. That's right. That's right. We're, you know, I hope that the American people have had it and they're not going to put up with it anymore. We're going to come back with Lou Rockwell, LouRockwell.com. He is the chairman of the Von Mies Institute. I want to look at the economy with you when we come back. Okay. What's happening in the real economy? I travel the nation. It's rotting. It's falling apart. And all the real numbers show that. We've got all these Cook statistics. How long can the facade stay up? I don't think it's up. 6% approval rating for Congress? Ceausescu was more popular than that in Romania. Huh. Uh, I mean, I think cancer is more popular than Congress right now. So, or gonorrhea at least. We're going to be right back with Lou Rockwell, libertarian icon. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. You know, a big part of this, Alex Jones here back live, is that we've been so nice to government and, and bent over to it for so long that it literally thinks we're owned by it. But corporations, if you price check at Walmart, they threaten to arrest you and threaten to put you on a uh, ban list. And, and our own crew member went over there to buy a box fan a few months ago. We have video of this. And they said, let me check your receipt. And he goes, here it is. The guy said, let me see it. And he said, no, I'm leaving. And the guy said, I've called the police. They're waiting outside. And you'll be banned from any corporate store ever again. That's on video. And it just shows this arrogant, hateful attitude, this predatory attitude. And we see federal checkpoints taking DNA under intimidation. We've got a victim of this coming up in the next hour. Uh, we see coal power plants that are brand new and clean, like Wolverine. We're going to play that later, getting shut down. And we see government uh, with fake court cases using NSA data uh, in court cases and creating fake briefs for the juries of where they got evidence. Just organized crime. And Lou Rockwell, what is the excuse on average in government? And I want to get into the economy in this brief segment with you. What is the excuse? Because so many people in government now actually believe doing corrupt things are good because they're good. Well, that's not really the case. Or they actually consciously are just criminals. And what do we do when they had hearings two weeks ago in Congress with Jonathan Turley, the liberal and conservatives from other groups saying we may have to revolt physically. I don't want that. They were saying, though, under the Declaration of Independence, it could come down to that. I mean, this is an amazing time to be alive when in the face of the public waking up, government doubles down. Well, I think, Alex, we do have to revolt. I, I don't think that we can use violence, uh, killing people, putting people in cages, torturing people, um, tasering people. You know, that's the way of government. <clears throat> that's not our way. Our way is the peaceful way. Our way is the w way of withdrawing consent and of, of, of laughing at them. And of uh, uh, they hate, by the way, being laughed at. The government has no sense of humor. People who work for the government have no sense of humor. But it's a very effective tactic. And we have to, if we get enough people refusing to play the game, the government can't actually uh, work against us. But you know, if, uh, if, if, if anybody were to threaten them with violence, they're happy to kill you and maybe your family and maybe your whole neighborhood, too. So, you know, that's maybe things do come down to that at some time in the future. I, I hope not. But uh, I think there's a lot we can do in the meantime without taking part in, in government activities. And we always have to remember uh, that these are, uh, you know, these are, are a bunch of criminals. And my guess is at least most of them don't think of themselves as criminals. They think of themselves as people who are protecting the common good. They think uh, they really know more about taking care of your children than you do. And really, the government owns your children. 
Uh, they believe that. And the government owns your business. The government owns you. The government owns your house. They, you know, they own every, they own your church. They own every aspect of your life. And uh, you better obey. But uh, I think more and more people are going uh, crazy about the kind of uh, tyranny that they're facing. They're learning more. They're reading more. It's always essential to learn some real economics, some real history, some real political philosophy of the kind they do not teach in the government schools uh, so that you can be intellectually armed. Um, I, uh, this is what young people are doing. Uh, it's important to read books. Uh, the government doesn't want you reading serious books. But it's important to do so. And uh, I, I think there's a tremendous movement uh, towards freedom sort of going under the surface. And, and the people in government sort of feel things uh, shaky under their feet. It's why they're constantly scared of us. You notice they're all scared, whether it's the TSA in the airport or uh, bureaucrats in a government office or uh, the military or the CIA or the EPA or the tax police or, you know, the uh, FDA going down the alphabet from hell. Um, they all fear the people. And it's not because they fear a bunch of people coming in with guns. That's, you know, they, they feel very confident that's not going to happen. But they fear our disobedience. They fear our uh, non-respect. They fear our refusal to kowtow to them. Well, that's uh, why the mafia always wants you to, quote, respect them. That means fear them and do what they say. And that's what right. government and TV, everything is about. You're being watched. We can get you. You're powerless. Do what we say because we are the food. No, that's right. I hate to smear the mafia by comparing them to the government, but you're right. You're right. It's exactly it's exactly the same process, and they really uh, enjoy us, you know, salaming them, and they enjoy killing people. These are these are these are not good types. The people who rise to power in government. F. A. Hayek said that unlike in in private life, the worst rise to the top in government. The worst people come to power. And they are, you know, they're the most rotten. So it's not the average postman or fireman or whatever we have to worry about, but the top guys in government.